if you're looking for mass appeal, I've got you covered. I've got some great fragrances here that are very easy to wear, mass appealing. I don't think anybody's going to dislike any of these unless they don't like fragrances in general. You are good to go. Stay tuned to find out about these fragrances. YouTube. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mike, Michael, Mikey Cologne and if you're tuned in as always thank you very much for doing so. If you're new here and you're stopping by for the first time and you do enjoy my content hit the subscribe button, press the bell because it will notify you when I drop a review. Right today I've got eight great versatile fragrances. There's going to be a few in this list that you've probably heard or seen thousands of reviews on, but I've put them in the list for a reason, is that they're easy to wear, and like I say, they're versatile. If you're, or if you've been collecting fragrances for a good few years, some of these you might look at and go, mm, got it, owned it, got rid of it, or mm, yeah, it's all right, but I've kept it. But if you're new to the game, and you haven't tried any of these, trust me, if you get them, sample them, you will be good to go. Never blind buy, always sample. That is the best way to save a bit of dough and obviously look on discounters. But anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. We're going to start off with Parada Luna Rosa EDT. This has been around for a good few years now and for good reason. This is so easy to wear. Office friendly, you can wear this to the gym. Oh, it is good. It's got a soapy quality to it, but in a good way. Right, you've got lavender, bitter orange, mint, clary sage, ambre, and ambroxin. So up top it opens. It does open a little citrusy. It opens aromatic. Like I say, it's very fresh and clean. It's also, it sits a little bit light on the skin. Like This is not a heavy, dense fragrance. Because some aromatics can go that way. But this, all year round, once it dries down a little bit, the mint comes in. It adds a little bit of a herbal touch. Plus, it pushes a lot more freshness into the fragrance. It does have a little bit of a musky dry down. Simple fragrance, but it is effective. I have, I don't know how many bottles of this that I've bought. And I've never had a bad compliment against this fragrance i'm not saying i've had tons of good compliments but i've never had anyone turn around and say man what are you wearing you stink that smells like crap nothing this gets the job done and it doesn't bother nobody but anyway that is prada luna rosa edt this is a great mass appeal fragrance I had to put an Aaron Terrence Hughes fragrance on this list. I was looking at them and I could have chose few of them, but I went with Ozone. This is a great, great fragrance. Fresh up top, we'll get into it. The reason why I'm not using test strips is because I've run out and I'm waiting for some more to come in. So air and skin, it is right. You've got bergamot, lemon, lime, spearmint, ozone, coconut, mocha record, ethical ambergris, ambroxin, patchouli, driftwood, and white musk. The way all them citruses gel together up top, it's fresh, plus you've got the spearmint, so it's like super fresh, citrusy, the citruses, they've got a little bit of bite to it. You obviously get a little bit of that minty accord from the spearmint. And then once, after a couple of minutes, the coconut creeps in and it starts out slightly watery. But then when the mocha accord comes in, it turns that coconut and it goes creamy, a little bit milky. At this stage, you've got a little bit of sweetness into the fragrance. Then that ethical ambergris comes in with the driftwood. It turns woodsy, airy, and this does go slightly salty on my skin in the dry down. And this does have a musky edge to it. 
it is a well done fragrance. Some people think spearmint and it smell like toothpaste. It doesn't. It comes across minty, fresh, citrusy. It is a great fragrance. To me, it is mass appealing. Definitely. Like, I don't think anybody's going to dislike this fragrance. It's so easy to wear. Plus, it's versatile. A lot of these fragrances on this list are versatile. And I haven't really got dense, heavy fragrances because some of them can be a little bit daring. But anyway, it is Ozone from the House of Aaron Terence Hughes. I had to put this one on the list because it is very versatile and it is definitely mass appealing. It is coming from the House of Chanel and it is Blue de Chanel at the Parfum. Apparently, this is the best of both worlds. All I can say is, it is a nice fragrance. Great atomizers on these bottles. Chanel's and Dior's, they do great atomizers. Oh, it is good. Bergamot, lemon, grapefruit, vetiver, pink pepper, cedarwood, nutmeg, ginger, labdanum, sandalwood, amberwood, and frankincense. Right, when this first opens up, it's full-on citrus. You get the lemon and the bergamot, but to me, the grapefruit overshadows them too, just by a little bit, because on my skin, that grapefruit definitely stands out more. And then you get a little bit of spice from the pepper. After about a minute or so, you, the vetiver, the wood start creeping in, the fragrance starts turning or slowly turning aromatic. And then once after about five minutes, the nutmeg, then the ginger, and you get a little bit of zing from the ginger, and then it dries down a little bit more. But while it's drying down, that freshness is leveling out. And then the fragrance starts turning, like you get a little bit of an ambery sweetness from the fragrance in the mid. You still get a little bit of the citruses, but now it's warmed up a little bit. And like I say, you get a little bit of sweetness into the fragrance, that frankincense, it sort of just flows through the mid into the base. Like it's never a full on incense fragrance, but it's just there. It's just like working its way around the other accords and notes. Just letting you know that there is a little something there. In the late dry down, this does go quite woodsy on my skin. Like by then, obviously the citruses have dissipated. The ambery sweetness is calmed down. And when I say ambery sweetness, it ain't a full-on amber fragrance. You just get a little bit of that warm sweetness into, in the back of the fragrance. This is a great scent. Very versatile. Definitely mass appealing. The longevity is not the best on my skin. I get about an hour and an hour and a half to moderate projection. Then it starts sitting closer. It's not beast mode, but it will get the job done. But it's very versatile. This is loved by so many people. And yeah, that is Blue de Chanel at the Parfum. I don't care what anyone says. To me, this is mass appealing. It is La Beau Le Parfum. What a stunning fragrance. I love the way this smells. If you're rocking this, I don't think anyone's going to dislike it. Mass appealing, 110%. Oh, that opening it is so good. To me, it's like nearly gourmandish. You've got coconut, pineapple, tonka bean, ambergris, ginger, iris, sandalwood, cypress, and patchouli. Not a big nut, not a big note breakdown. It opens sweet pineapple, juicy, then the coconut is there. The sandalwood mixes in with the coconut so it goes creamy. The cypress comes in and gives it a little bit of a woodsy backbone. The tonka throws more sweetness into the fragrance. Once everything levels out a little bit, the ginger does give it a little bit of spice. And then that iris does give this a little bit of a powdery edge. You won't notice it really in the opening, but once you start getting in the mid to the dry down, it does go ever so slightly powdery. This is not your lipsticky iris. Like I say, it just puts a little bit of powder into the fragrance, into in the dry down. The patchouli in this does, it adds a little bit of sweetness in. It's not dark or earthy, but it does have a woodsy side. 
So as this dries down, it becomes a little bit more woodsy and the fragrance, it starts out fresh and then it ends up a little bit heavy, not thick and dense, but it does have a little bit of substance to it, so to speak. So it's fresh and tropical and juicy up top. And then once you get into the mid, that is when it's full on creamy and then it just goes ever so slightly heavy on the skin. I would not wear this in the dead of heat. I wouldn't. I think it would just be too much. The way that sweetness comes across, it will probably choke you out and other people around you. So it can be worn all year round, but in the summer, just not on super hot days. And it smells fantastic. I will always have this in my collection. It is mass appealing. Just if you like coconut and pineapple and woods, give this one a go. Some people might think that it leans a little bit feminine because of the coconut. I don't. I don't think it leans feminine at all. I think a woman can pull it off, but as easy as a man can pull it off. Anyway, that is La Beau, La Parfum, Mass Appeal in a bowl. This one that I'm going to talk to you about now. I wasn't really a lover of it at first. When I done first impressions on it and an update review, but I have been reaching for it more lately. And do you know what? It has grown on me and it does what it needs to do. It is coming from the house of Armaf. It is Club de Nui, Urban Man, Elixir. Right. This is a mix to me of Club de Nui, Intense Man and Dior Sauvage EDT. Not the EDP, not the Parfum or the Elixir the EDT, but it does do its own thing in the dry down. I'm going to read you the notes, and like I say, at first I was like, why did they clone Dior Sauvage and maybe some people might say Aventus, but I think it smells more like Club de Nuit Intense Man. Yeah, it's you get a big bergamot citric blast when this first opens up. You've got bergamot, jasmine, orange blossom, pink pepper, taggarts, lavender, saffron, elemi resin, geranium, vetiver, ambroxin, amber, cedar, labdanum, and patchouli. Very fresh up top. You Like I say, you get that bergamot, it packs a punch. But plus, you get the aromatics that come in. Then you get the spice, but it's fresh spice. The ambroxin is there, it is pushing, it is giving this fragrance a little bit of a musky side, plus it's adding to the woodsy side of things. Once it dries down a little bit more, it does go like the aromatics amp up, right, the florals in this fragrance. To me, they are just helping out with the overall aspect of the scent. Like, nothing to me comes across really floral in this fragrance. I just think they have a helping hand in the aromatic side of things, into the fresh side of things. Plus, I do pick up on a herbal nuance once this fragrance starts getting into the mid. So the florals, like the jasmine, the orange blossom, this is not a uh, feminine fragrance. It isn't. To me, it's a masculine scent. And if you're a bloke watching this, don't be put off by them. Like I say, they just add to the overall like scent profile, so nothing comes across floral. You do get touches of that lab denim and the patchouli in the base, it does warm up a little bit. It like the wood sand up, it turns from fresh and it still stays fresh, but it just warms up a little bit in the base. There is some sweetness there. It is a good fragrance, and there is no doubt about it. Scent profile wise, it is mass appealing because. Dior, I was about to say, yeah, Dior Sauvage is mass appealing. Club de Nuit Intense Man is mass appealing. Creed Avengers, all them type of fragrances, it does give off them vibes. There is no doubt about it. I don't know if that's what they were going for, but that is how it comes off. But aromatic, fresh, spicy, citrusy, woody, musky, a little bit sweet. And that is Club de Nuit Urban Man Elixir. Plus, you can pick this up for a good price. £40 in the UK for a 100ml bottle, and this thing lasts. Like, the longevity and projection on it, they are great. Like, it will get you through a work day, 
and you will still pick it up. Like on, on skin, hours and hours and hours. On clothes, it is on there for days. So it is worth the money if you enjoy them scent profiles. You've got to love the House of Grelan. And this is on Lo Waze. What a stunner this is. And if you can find this at discounters, this is worth the pickup. Simple note breakdown. There is nothing complex about this scent, but crisp, very fresh, definitely mass appealing. Yeah, right. You've got grass, lime, vetiver, woodsy notes, rum, musk, geranium, and mint. That lime slaps you straight in the nose when this opens up. Bop, you get a big hit of it. But alongside that, you get the vetiver and the woodsy notes. So it's lime, vetiver, woodsy notes. So this has a strong woodsy backbone. The vetiver, once that opening calms down, the vetiver does come across ever so slightly earthy. You've got the grass call, which gives this fragrance like a green undertone. You've got the mint that throws loads of freshness in there. The geranium adds a tiny little bit of spice. Plus it gives it a little bit of an aromatic edge. Right, the rum. You do get the rum. Once that opening calms down and you get into the mid, the rum does come through. But it's more like a watered down rum. Like this is not a heavy, boozy fragrance. It's just there in tipples, if that makes sense. But it does add a little bit of sweetness into the base of the fragrance. And this does have a musky edge to it. So it's woodsy, fresh, very clean, slightly boozy, minty. It's a great scent. Like I say, if you can pick this up at discounters, it is worth the coin any day of the week. But anyway, this had to be on the list. Definitely mass appealing, very easy to wear, plus very versatile. And that is on Lo Boise from the House of Grelan. Do not let this one slip. Coming from the House of Eccentric Molecules, it is Eccentric O2. This is the fragrance that made me do this list. I love the way this smells like. Every time I spray this on, I am hyped. I'm so glad to have this in my collection and I'm definitely getting a backup bottle of this. I hope they never discontinue this fragrance. To me, it is mass appeal on another level. This fragrance, especially in the heat, it goes through changes on my skin, right? You've got juniper berry, mandarin, lime, bergamot, ginger, clary sage, pink pepper, oris, hedione, freesia, musk, ambroxin, vetiver, and tonka. So this opens up citrus heavy, but it's also a little bit fruity. So citrusy, a little bit fruity, musky, the ambroxin is near on there straight away. This is woodsy. Once that opening calms down, like you get a nice, as well up top, the juniper berry does give this fragrance a little bit of a crisp edge. But once that opening calms down, it just, it warms up a little bit. It turns a little bit sweet. It turns a little bit more fruitier. The wood amp up a little bit more. The musk, the oris gives this fragrance a little bit of a powdery touch. Just the way it smells, crisp, clean, citrusy, slightly fruity, woodsy, musky. It's a great scent. If you haven't tried this fragrance already, I beg of you to sample it because this thing, I don't know when it come out, but I don't know if it's had the hype and it's well been done. But man, this fragrance smells good. It is newer to my collection. I'm so glad to have this fragrance. Like I say, this is definitely mass appealing all year round, very versatile. And in the heat, it just, it beefs it up a little bit. When your body warms up, it just beefs the fragrance up a little bit. It projects more. Anyway, Eccentric O2 from the House of Eccentric Molecules. We have one coming from the House of Giorgio Armani. And it is Aqua de Gio Other Parfum. This is another mass appeal in a bottle. This juice, it does smell very, very nice. There is no doubt about it. Versatile, very easy to wear. Like 
I want to say it again, if someone likes fragrances in general, you're going to like this fragrance. There is nothing off-putting. There is nothing challenging. Oh, right. C notes, green mandarin, clary sage, lavender, geranium, mineral notes, vetiver, and patchouli. This opens aquatic. That mandarin pops off my skin. Plus, it adds a little bit of sweetness into the fragrance. It almost comes across a little bit fruity, almost citrusy, but that green mandarin nearly fruity. And then the fragrance starts turning aromatic, the clary sage, the geranium, soft spicy. You get a little bit of a green herbal undertone to this fragrance, which I think is coming from that clary sage. And then once you start getting into the mid to the dry down, like the woods just amp up, and that patchouli, it does push a little bit of sweetness into the base, but it also has a helping hand in the woodsy side of things. Like it's not a challenging patchouli, a little bit sweet, a little bit woodsy, not a complex fragrance. That is why these fragrances or this line has been around for so long. And that is why they keep making one after the other, like a flanker after a flanker. It's because they're mass appealing, they're easy to wear, they're basically near on a dumb reach. Like if you want to smell good on the go and you don't want to offend anyone, grab this fragrance or any of these fragrances. But anyway, that is Aqua de Geo, other puff on. Nice fragrance, mass appealing. Right, that is eight mass appeal fragrances. Like I say, if you're newer to the game, you might enjoy some of these more than someone that's been in the game for a good few years because some of these fragrances have been around for a good few years. But anyway, let me know which fragrances you own out of these lot. Let me know which ones you would choose or which ones you think are mass appealing. Remember, smelling good's always a pleasure and never a chore. And I'll definitely see you lot on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.